there, everybody, and welcome to take two of uh, me starting this with, you know, Uncle Fish will do this job. Uh, yeah, so I'm still a little bit unwell, so I wasted basically half an hour doing the setup for this. Drove the Mac up here. It got stuck uh, in this big, see that big trough there. Uh, so then I drove this up to help recover it. Uh, then figured, no, why don't I just use this for car, use this for the cargo instead. So I drove it here with a flatbed and got a and got the wrong trailer. So, yeah, all kinds of messed up. So yeah, what we're doing today, if I can reverse this a little bit, is this mission and the special cargo from the port, not the ship. There are some containers listed as special cargo, and seen as this mission takes us to the port. I thought, well, why not? So if I can... I'm not going to make this corner. So we're up in the northwest of the map. And we've got to head down the hill. And then back up around the other side to the brick factory. So we can get the bricks. To go with this stuff. So I'm in the Kenwith again. Continuing the tradition of more or less using just the Kenwith and the Mac for all the missions. Although I know I have deviated. I've used the Twin Steer. I've used the Mastodon. I've used the uh, B-16. But you know, for the majority of the missions, this has been this has been the setup. Giving the Mac and the Kenwith the most thorough tests. So, yeah. Um, if I'm still sounding a bit weird, which, uh, yeah, I think I am. I'm still not feeling 100%. Uh, this is on like, the Wednesday. So, what, I've been under the weather for like six days now. Uh, just purely with the um, one in, like, one inflamed si like, the top left sinus area in my head by my temple. Uh, which hasn't been that pleasant. It's been very painful. So I've had a lot of painkillers and uh, a lot of no spray to, uh, to try and clear it up. So, yeah, recording and um, editing and, of course, streaming sort of, you know, takes the back seat when you're not very well because I don't want to sit there in pain trying to play like SnowRunner, which can already be painful in a different way. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to double up on that. But I'm giving this a go. They feel a lot better today, but still, I feel still a bit nasally. So apologies for that. But yes, we are nearing the end of this region. And that is a good thing because season 11 is just around the corner uh, with the two new scouts. Um, I've only driven them, the new ones, for about 20 minutes each. Uh, but there will be videos and reviews. I'll, I'll, this time I will just combine the review and how to get into uh, like one per truck, one per vehicle. Uh, just for the sake of easiness, because uh, I have a lot on at the minute. So if I can trim down the, the actual number of videos I have to make, uh, then that is better for, I think, everybody actually, to be honest. <laughs> So yeah, we've got this, uh, this is a fairly easy route. Yeah, come to think of it, my original plan was to use the Mac towing this trailer and ooh, even getting up the hill to the factory, like I got stuck a little bit. So yeah, coming up here with the metal beams on to then get the bricks, I think would have been too much for it. It's that, uh, it, it just doesn't quite have the, the, the good enough tires. I'm just hoping that I can get this thing around corners. Oh. Uh, without tipping over the, the trailer. I mean, if this doesn't show that the Kenworth isn't lacking in power, then I, I don't know. I don't know what will. Uh, Obviously, when we're loaded up with bricks, you'll see the full weight. 
But I believe the, what, pack metal beams are five ton. That trailer is, I think, about six. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're gonna be, we're gonna be hefting a fair way, but I'll put it up on the screen once we've got the bricks, what our total weight is. Um, to show that, you know, this six wheel drive truck packs a punch. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you when I've got the bricks on and we're heading back down this hill. All right, we got bricks aplenty now. I mean, I probably could have saved myself a little bit of time um, taking a concrete block or slab, whatever, the, whatever they're called, from the other place, because that also has to be support later. But, I mean, I need two. So, I mean, if I'd have loaded one, I'd have still needed to have gone back for the second. So, so it's fine. So yeah, we are we're pretty heavy right now. Although the ramp flatbed trailer really doesn't make it look like that because it's bobbing around like crazy. I'm just hoping I'm driving from the trailer camp uh, just to sort of demonstrate. Um, despite the projected weight, how easily the trailer flies around. <laughs> it's pretty silly to be honest. As we make our way over this mixture of outcrop and boulders, both of which are mostly fixed into the ground. Uh, yes, this is definitely what was intended for the trailer. Uh, that wouldn't have just ripped it in two. Oh yeah, can I just go through the water here if I don't make the corner? It looks like I can. I just... I've, yeah, I'm going this way now. <laughs> So we're, we've gone full off-road. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go a little bit left. Let's me take that big sweep into the right. And then once we're over here, I can probably try and put it back into auto to try and get some high gear. Yeah, there we go. It's just a little bit of uphill. But yes, we are trusting in the Mac to actually take us back to Duncan Bay for uh, for a delivery to... I'm not actually sure where it's going. It's hopefully, I don't know, somewhere easy. <laughs> but I mean, this is... Uh, this is a fairly long drive, actually. Although, yeah, the bit with the Mac coming up that I'm somewhat worried about is uh, just getting through the marshy bits. Uh, I was a bit slow on the gear change there. Yeah, getting through the marshy bits, which is why I've gone with a semi-trailer and not, like, a ramped flatbed or, you know flatbed on the truck and a small trailer just try and keep the weight on the rear axles rather than behind the truck to uh, to maintain better traction uh, although some of it will just be reduced to low gear crawling given that it doesn't have the ground clearance of this truck which it should be fairly obvious given that this thing is uh, uh, it's like driving a building. It's pretty massive. But yeah, from here on out, it's it's pretty straightforward. So, um, yeah, I'll see when I get towards the port. Oh, shoot. Oh, uh, I was just so in autopilot mode. Um, I drove straight through the Doom Pit without really any trouble. So, yeah, you know, this is good for that. <laughs> I, that just completely... I forgot where I was. I almost forgot what I was doing. Uh, right, there's our... You can see ahead there. Our later setup. Which is all primed and ready. As we fire... I presume there's no good, not going to be a cutscene or anything for this. Oh! Oh, there is! But it's not really a cutscene, is it? It's just watching things appear. Uh, 
two consumables and two concrete slabs. And oh, that has become available. As always, I cannot remember if concrete slabs are a one or a two piece cargo. I think they're a one. So I'm going to leave that trailer there. Um, we're going to head to the farm, the fish farm, to get the consumables, which is going to be, in this case, fish. Surprise, surprise. Ah, uh, what a shocker. All right, come on. Yeah, look at her go. Although, ooh, making this corner for this bridge. Yeah, I can feel a slight pain in my head, so I'm not still... Mm, it's not 100%, which means... If it doesn't help, I did play quite a lot of Starfield yesterday. Uh, so my head probably hurts from setting up out multiple outposts to be linked together. Uh, not as intuitive as it seems. That's a real... Yeah. Also, I wish the the, uh, the storage boxes were a lot bigger. Um, I miss the, uh, you know, Elder Scrolls and Fallout, you know, bottomless pit of storage you can have. I've got so much stuff that I've collected uh, that I have to just keep building little boxes and filling them up. With uh, there's not, it's only internal boxes that you can just put anything into the ones for cargo like oh this one's for organic material this one's for inorganic material like, i just want to put all my stuff in a box that can hold more than 300 kilos because that's really bloody low they need to add jumbo containers um which i'm gonna now shut up about because i'm talking about a different game while playing uh, I'm talking about one game while playing a, a different one. But anyway, yeah, this is where you get the fishies from. Uh, da, da, da. Consumables. Oh no, maybe I should have double checked. Uh, when I was there, yeah. I think I always get concrete blocks. And I think slabs are the one cargo one. I always get them back to front, which leads me to believe that the slabs are the one by one. But I could be wrong, and I have been before. Because it'd be nice if it just had, like, the cargo size. Like the, you know, the size slot number just somewhere in the game. Because, I mean, you know, most stuff is quite easy to remember, like a cargo container, yeah, it's either going to be two or four, depending on if it's drilling, special, or oversized. Consumables, bricks and stuff, metal beams, you know they're all, you know, ones and twos. But then you have two bits of cargo with essentially the same bloody name. Concrete slab and concrete block. This, uh, why? Right. Oh, yeah, nearly didn't make that corner. Look at that raging torrent. You get white water rafting down there. If your raft was really small. So now I might. I'm gonna. Yeah, I'll take a trailer with me, just in case. But you know, I'll only take a small one. I don't need to take the ramp flatbed. That would be a bit much. So that's, yeah, that's a nice, uh, easy delivery. I thought the trailer was gone then. It's over there. Slam the brakes on. Oh, still in reverse. Come on, silly boy. So, given that the roof isn't there, I am guess it's going to be made of concrete. It's going to be made of concrete slabs. 
Well, I mean, it's not going to be made of fish, is it? <laughs> right, I'm going to head back to the factory, so I'll catch you shortly. All right, all right. we're up here. Just, uh, this is a terrible loading bay area. Slabs, ah, the R2 cargo. Good thing I brought a trailer. Okay. There's just something about this specific spot. Maybe I'm, uh, maybe I'm approaching this loading area the wrong way. Oh no, I'm about to Austin Powers myself between some bins and a container. No! Don't, oh, thank god it's a sideboard. Right. Yeah, some of the, um, some of the loading and unloading areas uh, in this region are really quite brutal. Like this, you know, this being one of them. Like the, the spot as well where you come out of the garage, um, you do need to use all-wheel drive to get this truck out of it because the front of the truck sits in mud. But, uh, right. Yeah, maybe the real play is coming around the other way, driving into this forward and then just gently reversing out. Because it's also not entirely circular. And it is too small for a truck of this size. Oh, I need to make sure I, yep, repack the trailer. Yeah, glad I brought the trailer, or else, cause, oh my god, that nearly went over again. Because as you can see, I've got no crane, so I wouldn't have been able to double up. I'm just stacking the slabs on top of each other. So yeah, it's pretty much the same, uh, same old song and dance. This is going back to the, blah blah blah, the blah 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 place, the fi the food can factory. I mean, it's written on the screen, and I'm struggling for the words. It's, I mean, it's written right there. That just shows how slow I am at the moment. Just, uh, brain function not quite what it should be. So yeah, another fairly heavy load. Uh, lessened. Though, oh no. By uh, the use of a smaller trailer. Which, yeah, always helps the situation. You can reduce the weight wherever you can. Then why not? I suppose technically I could have done that by swapping onto a two slot flatbed. But, uh, I'm not sure there's going to be really that much weight difference between those add ons. So, as we did before, because it's uh, the same or most of this is road with a little bit of mud. So you want to see you by the fish factory. Alright, so here we are arriving at the old doom pit. So I've been through here quite a lot today. Uh, so yeah, it's just uh, low gear. The, the, the forward metal work is catching the ground a bit where it's bent and buckled. But, other than that, although I'm about to be proven wrong, aren't I? Although we, we've slowed up a little bit. This is how much I've gone through this ground. You churn it up and it becomes harder and harder to get through. But there we are. That's a uh, more appropriate speed. And then a bit more oomph. And then a lot more oomph. And then all the oomph. We are through. So this is going to be a pretty fancy looking camp food factory given all the brickwork that it has on the outside. Um, wait, was that boulder always there? That one's enormous. So, in we slide. Here we go. And bing. 
Yeah, um, there's quite a lot of metal in there. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, so what comes out of there now? Cargo container, metal rolls, metal beams, consumables. Now we have two places for consumables. Alright, well, we'll shimmy this out of the way for now. Uh, into this gap? I don't know. I'm sort of crowding this area. And then we're going to move on to port of delivery from the port. That's not what I meant to do. So I've equipped the big crane for no real reason. Honestly, I'm not sure why they added this crane. Uh, yeah, I, it doesn't... I thought maybe if they were adding this, there was a, a mission that required it. But no. I mean, yes, it's way more stable than the other cranes and can actually pick things up. But instead of... Why didn't they just improve the existing cranes? Rather than just adding an enormous... This was so heavy. Um, well, it's like 15 tons or something. Um, and really does kill the power of a lot of vehicles. And only the biggest ones can... Uh, well, the longest can run it. Like the Mastodon. Obviously, there's Kenworth. The uh, Azov 73210. You know, so the trucks have to be a certain size in the first place. And it's just a huge power sap. Oh, wrong button. And down. Uh, yeah, it does have improved uh, outriggers. So half of the out... Well, less than half of the outrigger is actually uh, solid. So won't just collapse under any weight. Whereas the lower bit actually will just collapse in the normal way, but it should prevent the truck from actually falling over. Uh, the heaviest thing I think I was able to lift was the Azov 5319. Uh, not completely off the ground, but, you know, getting the, you know, picking it up by the front. And, you know, because that's the heaviest part and getting that off the ground. We're going to leave that there. Jump in our Mac defense. We're gonna pack. And we're gonna get going. We've got a regular old little haulage job. Across into Duncan Bay. Deliver to the plant. I I don't know what that is. That's so non-specific. I mean, we'll see when I get there. Uh, it'll turn out that it's completely the wrong... <laughs> the wrong setup. And it'll need a rescue, but but we'll see. Um, actually not used to going through this little mud pit in this direction. So, I mean, because we're going to have to do it when we're moving the ship. So I might as well see what that's like now. Oh, hang on. Oh, the suspension was... I've immediately got stuck. Oh, that ground is just churned. Okay, moving a bit more under our own steam. I wonder... Yeah, just because I've been through here so much today have I turned it into just soup I think this truck struggled through the section anyway but we are moving although probably not for much longer I'm still a little bit and we've got a boulder ahead so I'm, I mean, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna winch it. You know it's coming. It has to happen at some point. Snowrunner would be far too easy if you never had to winch or do anything like this.
Right, where am I going? Oh, I'm going up here. Oh, I see. Ah, right, so there's the tricky bit. All right, so it's not too far. We have to go down this side of the valley, up the other, and then that'll be that. But yeah, overall, like, the primary, there are some exceptions to the mud tire valley, like the Kenworth, you don't need to use the super heavy mud tire. It's heavy enough and big enough in its own right that it just presses down through the mud to, I don't know, hit the, the, the air quotes bottom so it can drive through the mud. You know, you can apply a certain amount of weight to a truck in a certain place to, to help it. That's why trucks like this and the Ford CLT 9000 thrive um, with this trailer. Because it keeps the weight, like in this case, on three drive axles rather than having the weight behind you. Although I still think the low saddle position on this truck is too far forwards. Because uh, you do have a bit of an issue with hills. But yeah, oh, that's a big crash. Well, not really a crash, just a lot of damage. Come on, Mac, come on. You got this. We'll see if we can get there without having to refill. I don't really know why I've got supplies on the roof. That's extra weight I don't need. Pushing the front axle down. Look at that. Skipping. Because this is really just dirt road. Dirt roads and water. Absolutely fine with this thing. But here, this is where the mud begins. See that difference? It just plows straight in. Whereas, you know, other trucks, yeah, so you got the, so this is where body collision really affects your progress. Whereas the Kenworth is just, this ground clearance is so high. And this is with the active suspension engaged as well. We're at maximum height. So you wouldn't think so. But, I mean, that tends to come from, you know, these kinds of trucks. You know, um... Like, they... They're dairy longhorns and stuff. They're tank transporters. So their main operational area... In the last... What, 40 years... Has been the Gulf. Where... It isn't muddy there, is it? It's quite sandy. Uh, uh, it's not wet either so they're not, they're not really designed for these situations compared to the Russian trucks which you know you can find many many videos of Eastern trucks going through areas that you know would be difficult to walk through let alone drive but anyways ranting over one container, two container. That's only 9,500. Oh. Well, we got here... Uh, oh, there's a fuel tank. Not that I'm going to take fuel from it. That's a bit pointless. So, yeah, next time we will continue. We've got, uh, what, two left in there and two left in there. Yes, and uh, one task. So, maybe one, two episodes more and then we'll be all wrapped up. So I want to thank you very much for watching. I've been Deck, and this has been British Columbia Snowrunner, and have a great day.